So, hello. Um, I'm just starting a new crochet project, but my yarn got all tangled up. It's times like these where I wish I lived in four dimensions. Oh, did you know? In four dimensions, every knot can be untangled. Yeah. Let's see, I think I have some knots in here. Yeah, here we go. So these are all smooth embeddings of the circle into a three space, or just nice closed curves. This one right here is not knotted, it's just a ring. We call this the unknot. <laughs> this one is knotted because we can't move it through space to make it look like the pink ring without snipping it apart. We call this knot the trefoil knot, just like the Girl Scout cookie. But the reason that we cannot untangle the trefoil has to do with how we have embedded it in space. So if instead we were to put this knot into four dimensions, then our strands would be able to move around each other in order to untangle the trefoil to look like the pink ring. Ugh. But see, this is the problem with being a three-dimensional creature, is that's really hard for us to visualize. Maybe instead we could think about a line and two points on that line. Those two points can't move past each other if they only stay on the line. Each time they try, they'll just butt heads. But if we were to take our line and embed it into two-dimensional space, then one point can move out of the way and let the other guy pass and they can switch places. So this is an analogy for how we might think of two strands moving around each other in four dimensions. That means that in four dimensions, every knot, whether it's the trefoil or this figure eight knot, is going to be ambiently isotopic to the unknot. So we can just wiggle it around in four dimensions to make the unknot. That means not theory in four dimensions is pretty boring. <laughs> Good thing we live in three dimensions. Oh, actually, do you want to hear about another space where you can untangle knots? I just learned about it recently and it completely blew my mind. Okay, yeah, let's talk about it. This is called the light bulb lemma. And the name will make more sense once we've talked about the space. We're going to be embedding knots in the three-dimensional space S2 cross S1. The S here stands for sphere, so this is your normal two-sphere times a circle. Yeah, it's a difficult space to imagine, uh, but there's actually a really nice way to visualize it. Let's start by drawing the space S2 times an interval instead. First, we're going to start with a big sphere, and then we're going to continuously shrink in it until we get to a smaller sphere on the inside. Between these two concentric spheres, we have the three-dimensional space S2 times an interval. This is like a thickened eggshell or the chocolate part of a cream-filled egg. <laughs> so now we're going to glue together the two bounding spheres, making a quotient space, if you're familiar with that. If not, just imagine a rocket ship in our space, and just like the video game asteroids, when the ship flies to the outer bounding sphere, pop, it'll reappear on the inner sphere. And in this way, we will identify the two points in the same radial direction on our boundary spheres. This means that we've constructed a three-dimensional space without any two-dimensional boundary. Now, of course, we can have loops and knots floating around in the space between the outer and the inner spheres. And these will behave exactly the same as knots in normal three-dimensional space. That is, the trefoil knot, or any other non-trivial knot for that matter, cannot be unknotted. But we also
also have a new kind of loop in this space. So this ray right here is just a loop like this pink ring in our space because these two ends are the same. But now imagine if we replace part of that with a knot right here. Then the question is, is this a knot or not? This is where the magic of the light bulb lemma comes in. Because even though the trefoil knot cannot be unknotted in normal three space, in this new space, we have a special trick. We can bring a strand down and around the inner sphere to change a crossing and unknot the loop. This would work for any knot embedded in S2 times S1 in this special way. Or in more technical terms, we're looking at knots that cross some sphere S2 times T naught or T naught in the circle once and transversely. But you can just think of a knot going from the inner sphere to the outer sphere, if that makes more sense. So this is called the light bulb lemma because you can imagine one of those old light bulbs hanging from a cord in the basement. You pull the chain to turn it on. Um, and if there's a knot in that cord that the light bulb is hanging from, you can bring the cord down and around without moving that hanging light bulb to unknot the cord. And so in that analogy, your light bulb that's hanging is your inner sphere, is our inner sphere that, in the picture that we drew. It's a pretty cute name. If you're really interested in this light bulb lemma, then you might be also interested to know that there's a higher dimensional version that was proved in 2020 in a paper by David Gabay. So, in four dimensions, we can have spheres that are knotted up, even though our knotted circles all are equivalent to the unknot, we can have non-trivial knots in two spheres. And apparently in four dimensions, there is a higher dimensional analog of this light bulb lemma, or there's a certain space that you can move your, your two sphere around and unknot it. I don't know the details here, but I encourage you to check it out if you're interested. Just know it is like a full-on math paper. But what's really exciting about this space to me, S2 cross S1, is that it matters where exactly you embed your knot in this space. If you embed it in this special way that we talked about, you can untie it, untangle it to be the unknot. But otherwise, you can't. So that's a pretty exciting property. Dang it, all of this theory, and I don't think it helps me <laughs> untangle my yarn. I'll keep you updated on this crochet project. But until next time, I'll see you later, and as always, keep exploring. It's a naughty day.